You know, when I travel around the country, not only for barn find, but you know, to go to Hershey and SEMA and places, that's where I pick up leads for future episodes. I met Gary Duncan at the SEMA show, I don't know, at least five years ago, maybe longer. Well, it took this long to get here, and oh my God, what do you have here? Uh, we have the majority of our inventory is JDM cars that we bring from Japan. We've been importing since 2016. We've imported about 4,000 right-hand drive cars. So these are vehicles that were not legal to be sold in the United States when new, but how has that changed? By being 25 years, a little bit like in the regular classic world, uh, they can now be brought in under the emissions issues and DOT. Aha. Uh -huh. So, I mean, you're not, you're not just Japanese cars. You're just a car guy. That's all I know. I mean, that's your whole life, right? I yeah, mean, you grew I've up got, in this I've place. got a PhD. Papa had a dealership. Papa had a dealership. <laughs> <laughs> now this, that's an MGB V8. And it came from Japan. You, you won't see those anywhere else. So it's right-hand drive. This is a rare baby. So MGBs, if you remember, when they were available in the States, there was a four-cylinder. There were some models that came with a six-cylinder called an MGC, but this is a model that never was available in the States, but this is a V8. The, the origins of that motor are from a Buick, 215 cubic inch that was built in the United States in the early 60s, and when GM decided they didn't want that motor anymore, they sold it off to British Leyland and British Leyland adapted them to MGs, TRA Triumphs, Land Rovers, and is that like an original car? Yes, sir. We, all we've done is wash it. Whew, man. Now this is a rare common gear, Type 34. So we've never really featured one of these on Barn Fine Hunter. So if you look at this, you know, it, that, that's not a common gear tail light. It's not a common gear body. It was a, a special edition common gear that was available, I think, in the States for just a little while, but lots of them wound up coming here but you rarely see one. What's the story with that? As we get further back here, you'll see more low mileage VWs that I've collected over the years, and I didn't have one of those, and you kind of got to have one if you're going to have a VW collection. <laughs> so this is a Corona, what year? 69. We saw these in every parking lot, at every shopping mall. You can't find them now. They're... Wow. Manual transmission, two-door, Toyota Corona. I mean, this, this was the beginning of Toyota uh, entering the States. Toyota and Datsun started small and built and built and built. I just bought this car out of Washington State, a 71 Crown. I'd never seen one. The front end's about half ugly, but it's unique. That's, yeah, that's when ja Japan really was trying to figure out what styling was all about. There's grill down here and there's a kind of another grill up here. Tail lights wrap around. Like, Japan's got their act together now, but Back in the early days, they were experimenting with the U.S. market, and some cars made it and some didn't. All right, so, so tell me, what, what is this? Japanese horses. That is a century that they put those bodies on. It's pretty unique in Japan, especially the interiors of them also. And the other one, I think, is a, a crown, I believe. Mm -hmm. Look at the interiors. Huh? Oh, yeah, jeez. Look at this. Interesting. So you got a four door, four door hearse that you can't use the back door. Now what room is this? Like it's every kind of car. What is this called? It's got a Nissan running gear. This is a Masuka GLU, and I also have Buttes, but they've took this car and tried to make it look like a Rolls Royce with a Japanese running gear. It has kind of a Jaguar-ish look That's to it. That's right, and if you go look at the back, we'll see some more. Uh-huh, yes, some more. So what year was this built? Let's see, what is it? 90, 96, okay. 96. Uh-huh. But it's a full Nissan running gear, and they, they build some unusual stuff. It's pretty cool. And it's metal, wow. Yes. If you had three of these cars, I could spend a half hour on three cars. Yeah, you could. So this Renault Alpine, where'd this come from? Came from Japan. But this is left-hand drive. Yes, sir. Isn't that something? V6 turbo. I wonder what year this is. Uh, I think it's a 9. 89. And it's like a fiberglass body. Is it really? It's really light. Oh, yeah. 50,000 mile original 70 240Z. Probably one of the nicest in the country that's unmolested. 1970 is the first year 240Z was imported to the United States. I believe they, they started to manufacture in 69 for Japanese market. You can tell a 70 because it had these vents below the rear window and it had vertical lines. I think the later ones had horizontal defroster lines. These also have 240 
Z emblems on the C pillars. I mean, that's got the rare hubcaps, original paint, and no rust. This was the first time that came to the States. This one was so new in Providence, Rhode Island. The lady paid a whopping $1,648, Miss Dorothy Smith. Can you imagine this, that you could actually buy in 72 a new car, including everything, $1,648. Well, Dorothy Smith bought it, and here it is. Is this original paint? No, this is a repaint. A repaint, okay. This is a two-cylinder, right? No. I oh, no, I'm sorry. The 600 was a four-cylinder. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah, sure okay. of that. This is a rare piece out of Japan, what they call an Aero Deck Accord, limited production. The difference was all of this. Check this out. This is kind of a, like a mini sport wagon made, you know, onto a, attached onto a Honda two-door, four-door, two-door, I guess. And, and it's got a passenger right there. Yes, sir. Stink boat. This is a Figaro room. Tell me about why you became passionate about these cars. We were in Japan in 1989 on a Honda trip. We went to the Tokyo Motor Show and they were showing these. You knew it was a winner, but you couldn't bring them in for 25 years. So I've waited 25 years. They made them one year. They only made 20,000 of them. Four colors for four seats. The pastel, the green, the lapis gray, and the beige topaz. Electronic fuel injection, four cylinders. They're all automatics and it's all steel body. And they all had sunroofs. It looks like they have leather interior. Okay, so it's 25 years, suddenly it's legal. You had it in the back of your mind all that time. So who buys these cars? Who's your customer for this? Uh, a lot of ladies, a lot of people that have researched them. There's a Figaro owners group now in the US. So because we've spent so much time around these cars, we see the price at $23,999. This is one of the more expensive ones because just down the row over here, we see one that's $8,000. What does Haggerty feel these are worth? Let's take a look. They're all the same year. Turbo diesel engines, it says 75 horsepower, 987 cc's. See, it's interesting. Fair condition, which is like the one we saw up there, $8,700, right around the price that was on the windshield. In good condition, 15 grand even. In excellent condition, 30,800. And in concourse, $41,000. This one, $23,900 which puts it somewhere halfway between number three and number two condition. You know, it, it's got a pretty paint job. Uh, it's got a good interior. As Gary said, the dashboard's expensive to replace if it has cracks in it. It doesn't have cracks. The interior looks nice. There's a part source in the UK. It gets good gas mileage. It's reliable. It'll go highway speeds, but it looks like it was built in the 50s. You could do a lot worse buying a car to have fun with than one of these. You know, I actually drove one of these in 1989. It was a press car that Auto Week had. Really? And I was at Michigan National Speedway for the NASCAR race, and my buddy from Auto Week said, take it for a drive. You were early adopter. I was, yeah. That is cool. Now we'll get to the S-Cargos. So those look like, uh, yeah, like, yeah, S-Cargos. Same guy. They're called Pike Factory Cars. The same guy designed all of them. And this is a Japanese car? Yes, sir. It looks French, you know, it kind of looks like a Citroën de Chevaux or something. It does look like a snail though, doesn't it? Yep, yep, yep. So what drivetrain is in this? It's a Nissan. Four cylinder, is it a diesel? No. Gas, yes. okay. So you're selling this for 12.9? Yes, sir. And it's legal in the States? It's yes, older than 25? Yes. These are original vehicles, like they're not repainted or anything? No, sir. I mean, you know, 12,999. It's an investment. Yeah, good gas mileage. Reliable, probably. I got a rare bird here. This is a low mileage Suzuki with a rotary motor in it. Oh man, I've heard about these. Huh. Huh. A Mazda motor. So this had a, a, a four cylinder engine when new, but somebody swapped it out. So it's a two rotor Mazda engine. It looks like a four barrel, holy mackerel, a huge <laughs> four barrel. Now, another Masuka, except it looks like it's duplicating a Jag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we saw one of these before. It, it was a Nissan, rebodied. So the other one looked like a, a Rolls Royce and this one looks like a, a Jag. I can, I can understand that. It's got the classic look, but it's got a modern drivetrain. I get it. 1937 Datsun. So that's the oldest Datsun I've ever seen. I didn't even know they made them that far back. Right. So this is pre-World War II, man. So I'm seeing a, a Willys Jeep, but it's a four-door. And it's a Mitsubishi. No kidding. 
All right, so if I were to see this car in a parking lot, I'd say, oh, look at this Willys Jeep. How unusual, it's got a four door. And then I find out it's not even a Willys Jeep, although it says Jeep here. Did they build this under license from Jeep? No kidding. It's a steel body. Wow. It's 83 model. 83, this looks like a 1953. Wow. This is what all the kids want. And this, so this is a, what year, 96 yep. Skyline GTR. Yes, sir. What motor's in there? It's a, uh, it's a six, six with big horsepower, twin turbo. And it's a manual transmission here? Of course. And it's a rear wheel drive? Yes, sir. And this yep. is an unrestored car, it looks yes, like. Yes, sir. Are these rare in Japan or are they pretty They're common? rare everywhere. How many have you gone through of these? Probably 30. I asked my wife if she'd rather me do this or have a mistress. She said she thought a mistress would be cheaper and then she wanted to talk about a divorce. So I got over that real quick. I think I need treatment. <laughs> Gary Duncan, I think you'll agree, had an amazing collection of not only Nissan Figaro's, but all sorts of JDM Japanese domestic market cars and some American cars thrown here and there.